Hey folks, Larry from Larry's Fountain Pen, and today I'm going to be talking about a pen that you may or may not know, and the name of the pen, Mr. Announcer, is... Tactile Turn. The Gist. Yes, and, uh, and he will tell you the color of the pen is... Black. Oh, it is Black Delrin. Trying to get him more involved here. So oh, anyway, uh, and they're located at in Richardson, Texas, deep in the heart of Texas. So, are you ready for this, Mr. Announcer? Yes. Are we sure we're ready for this, Mr. Announcer? Yes. Cool. All right. All right. So, we're going to be talking about this really cool-looking pen. So, here we go. Bang! There it is. It's a beautiful black pen. And you know what it reminded me of? With the, the Lamy uh, 2000. Uh, it just has some similar traits that just kind of reminds me of it, but it's, but it's not. Uh, the whole feel of the pen, it, it's different. Uh, it, it really feels subtle in your hand. It, it has a nice texture to this pen. I want you to hear this as I rub my fingernail over uh, the material. You hear that? On the barrel. Now you don't get that on a smooth pen like here. Nothing there. On any kind of smooth pens you don't get that same feeling. So and that's kind of cool. And it d does feel uh, nice in the hands. Uh, the pen's machine body features a shallow grooves circling the pen along the barrel in the cap. And I will show you all this in a breakdown here in a few. I just want to talk to you a bit about the pen and describe it to you to try to give you uh, an idea about the pen. Uh, and it gives a nice, pleasant texture uh, and keeps it from slipping in your hands like you may do with a chrome grip, let's say. Let's take the pen, uncap it, okay? Let's just go straight to the grip. I may do this in a different order, but that's okay. Uh, if you have a, your basic chrome grip, uh, people don't like those for one reason, they, they tend to slip. Well, not with this texture on this grip. This actually holds your fingers in place, and it has a nice feeling. It's not uncomfortable, and you know where your finger's at, and it, the grip is actually large enough for larger fingers, but it does work, and, uh, I've been using this pen for over a week, and uh, I've used it, and it, it really, it's a workhorse pen. It's a take everywhere, anywhere, at any time type of pen. I mean, it's there to be used, and that's what it's meant to be. Uh, and it has a stainless steel nib on there, uh, and... I have a bonk nib in here, <clears throat> and let me just take my little eyeglass here for a minute. It has the bonk logo there, and bark on there, and this is a fine nib. Let's go ahead and put the cap back on the pen, and uh, let's talk about the cap a little bit. Uh, the clip is black, and you can get them um, in silver. Uh, as well, but I prefer the black. I think it looks really sharp on the black pen. Uh, the thread caps and grip to keep the pen in securely closed, and it does that. And it's not going nowhere. It's there to stay, and I like that. The cap and the barrel are machined from a lightweight Durlin plastic, and it comes with a converter, and that's good. Okay, so. Uh, it uses standard international long or short cartridges. And the length of the pen 
just like you see it here, it's 5.42 inches. When you unscrew the barrel, and for those who like to pose their pins, 6.2 inches. The length uncapped is 4.9 inches. Now the weight of this pen uninked is 0 0.69 inches. Let's talk about the nibs. Now, they come in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Now, if you want to pay the uh, surcharge of $60 to upgrade your nibs to a titanium, you can. Uh, extra fine, fine, medium, or broad. And for a titanium nib, 60 bucks is not too shabby. That's a that's a decent price, I think. Uh, so the clip is sturdy. So let's go ahead and clip it on the shirt and see how well it does here. All right here. I'll just do it. And once you clip it on your shirt, it's there to stay. And it's not going anywhere. It's secure. It's safe. Pop. Uh, the clip is a little tight now. It is tight. There's not a whole lot of play in it, okay? As you go up the uh, cap to the top of the finial, there's nothing really there. Just a flat, round surface there. Let's go down the barrel as it narrows to the end of the uh, barrel. There's nothing on the bottom of the barrel as well. So uh, let's go and uh, post it. But because it goes narrow the way it does down the barrel, that fits right into the cap nice and securely. Boom, it's in there and it's not going to go anywhere. You can do this all day long and it's not going. It is securely posted on your barrel, which is good, great. So let's take off the barrel. And it does come with a converter. And I just put some ink in it. And I'll be using the Pelican uh, 4001 Pilot. So as you go down the barrel, as you can see right in here, this is where the cap will hook onto the barrel. And there's nothing sharp here. And like I previously said on the grip, this grip is not slippery at all. The way it's designed, they've taken care of that. They, they knew that people were running a pin that would fit securely in their hand without slipping down the grip. So they took care of all these problems. And they've done a great job on it. They really put some work in it. So what I want to do here, I really want you, I want to share with y'all about the creation of this fountain pen. It's unique in its own right. And why? Well, I'm going to have Mr. Announcer uh, read you what they have put in this pen, how they have designed it, how they have put all the components to work with each other. So we're going to start with this one right there. Some people really prefer capped pins over click pins and bolt action pins. There is a beautiful simplicity to a capped pin. We use an Acme thread to keep the cap secure when closed, and because those threads have a flat top, they are much more comfortable to grip on. The idea when we first made these in 2015 was to make a fountain pen that was friendly to the tough needs of something you would use every day. Most fountain pens aren't really designed for hard use, so we found a great niche. We get a lot of feedback over time about ways to improve the pens, so in late 2018 we updated the line. One of the new options is whether you want a black clip or a silver clip. The silver clips are the same tumbled and polished finish found on all of our other pens. Now the texture 
known for their texture, the grip won't slip, like I said. Also protects the pins from light scratches by providing the texture surface that disguises the light scratches and much better than a smooth surface would. Uh, you know, if you had pins that have smooth surfaces and then, you know, you, you lay them here and lay them there and over time they'll get a little scratch here, a little scratch, and then you can see it. Well, this one will, will not. It will take care of that. So then we will go to the next part of the C and C machined pins and Mr. Announcer will take that away and let the people know about that. Tactile Turn was one of the first fully machined pen manufacturers. We don't do injection molded parts like most other pens. We make parts one by one on our computer numerically controlled lays in our own shop in Texas. We buy the best equipment available, the best material available, and turn raw materials into finished goods. We never skimp on quality as everything we make is designed to be an heirloom quality item. We want you to pass these on to your children. People buy tactile turn pins because they want an item with simple and elegant design made from amazing uh, materials that will withstand daily use for life. Now, last but not least, I want to talk about the updates to the pin. So, Mr. Announcer, would you do the honors, please, and we can close that part out. These are the updates. Longer bodies that accommodate the standard international converters. This extra length also makes the pins fit better in most hands and makes the pin a little more proportional. There are Higby thread starts for the caps. This is a machinist term, but in essence, it means there isn't a partial thread, and so initial engagement feels better and it is a stronger thread. Uh, 1.5 turns to open and close. The original gists were closer to 3, and it was a bit much. And then finally, plastic internal part for the metal pins, so they post more securely and avoid metal-on-metal -metal contact. Well, there you have it. That's a story about this pen and uh, if you've been curious about this pen I hope this review was clear so you could understand it I hope the parts that Mr. Announcer read help you understand what tactile turn has done to improve the quality of the pen to make this pen an everyday carry you know when you're going somewhere you want to take a pen that you can carry every day and call it your workhorse pen you're going to want a pen that's going to be dependable that's going to be there for you you're going to want a pen that's going to have under the hood a nib that's going to be there for you as well to make sure that that nib is going to be the way a nib should be smooth wet well this box nib to me is really sweet I've got a fine nib and it's it has just a hint of feedback but it's really a decent sweet nib that really I like yep I really do like it. That's why I've been using it a lot. And it's wet. So let me grab my Rhodia dot pad and show you how this fella writes. It really is an outstanding fountain pen. And we'll get to price here in a minute. I will post it. All right, let's get everything ready, my friends. All right, okay. Here we go. Very nice. Really. It really is, it's more smooth than anything. I mean, just a little hint of feedback, but not much. This is a fine nib. And 
we'll do a wet test and it does lay down the ink look at that for a fine nib is that sweet or not the nib delivers the nib is right on the money perfect that's why I've been using it now we'll do some writing And as you see, there was no problem with the uh, ink flows. There was no skips. As you saw previously, it has a nice wet flow. Let's do some reverse writing. As you saw in here, that was a hard start for the reserve writing, reverse writing, excuse me, and then it kind of died out in here. But then here, it did real fine, and then it kind of faded out on the F, then it picks up here. So it was on and off, uh, but it was fair. So for those who like to write reverse writing, you can get some reverse writing out of it. Not a lot, but some. Uh, nib variation here. That's just a downstroke with no pressure. Now, with pressure, you get a little bit. And that's pushing it. So, uh, all right, for the blank one here, it's $99. Then they have the titanium one for $219. And they have the copper for $139. Uh, and then the brass, and they're all nice finishes on these pens, $119. Then they come in roller balls as well. You can pick up a blank one for $99. Then they have a blank and white uh, pen as well for $99, a really nice looking pen. Uh, then they have a white one for 99 bucks. Then you get back into the rollerball with a copper for 139 Then you got a titanium rollerball for 219 Then you can get the, uh, the black and white yes, rollerball for 99 bucks, I believe. And the brass roller ball you get for one nineteen, and then the white one for ninety nine bucks. I believe they're not bad prices at all. Uh, the 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 colors are really great. Uh, the titanium, the copper, they look really kick. I mean, they're monster pins, and they're just something that you would want to put in your hands and take with you wherever, every day you would probably end up making this pen your workhorse pen. That titanium pen for $219 really looks juicy as well. So, um, you know, when I saw the guys at the Dallas Pen Show, uh, I went to the table because it's the pen that I wanted to pick up because I was interested about it. I wanted to see how well this pen performed. How did it actually feel in my hand? And was it worthy to take this pen everywhere, any, anywhere, and use it any time? And it passed everything I needed it to do. So, you know, I've been carrying it every day. I put it in my pen case. I'll throw it in my uh, man's bag. Uh, in my briefcase, uh, sometimes I'll carry it in my pocket or put it in my shirt, whatever the mood strikes me. So, uh, a great pen at a great value. Uh, okay, to get in touch 
uh, with Will or anybody from uh, for this fountain pen, all you have to do is follow Mr. Announcer's instructions, which is about to do right now. And the website is tactileturn.com. Very easy. Tactile turn. Tactile turn. Can you can you remember that? Sure, you can. So, what do you think about the pen? I agree. Every pen is not made for every person. We all are different. But this pen, you're going to be pretty impressed with it. I know I am totally blown away with it. It's just that good of a pen. It's quality pen. It really is. These guys know their business. They've done one heck of a job putting this pen together and for the value as well. So, let me talk to those people that are on a strict budget. You want a good workhorse pen, but you don't want that good workhorse price? You need to check this pen out. Ninety-nine bucks. Not a bad price, right? And no, they're not paying me to say this. I'm just telling you like it is. I bought the pen. wasn't given to me for review. So, uh, that's going to take care of this pen. I'm going to call it the tactile workhorse pen. That's pretty good, wouldn't you say? Yeah. All right, my friends. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of the video about this pen. It really is a nice fountain pen. And it just really feels great in the hand. You know, you'd be good doing this like if you're at work and you're at your desk, you'd be, hmm, that feels pretty slick. I like that. It's nice. It's not slippery. It's just, it comes together very nicely. Folks, thank you for watching. And remember, my friends, please, don't text and drive. Later, folks.